Presentation teaching experiment packs contain full, modifiable experiments for use by instructors and researchers. In this video, we will briefly show some examples of the data output from teaching experiments, so you know where to look for the data you need. To follow along with this video, we recommend watching the first teaching pack video, which walks through downloading, setting up and running teaching pack experiments. We also recommend that, to follow along using your own data files, you run the Simon Effect experiment found in Teaching Pack 1. OK, so let's generate some data files by running the Simon Effect experiment. Remember, to run the experiment, we'll open it, click the Run button on the main tab, enter our subject name, click OK, then click Run Non-Stop. Now that we've run our experiment, let's take a look at the data it generated. To find the data, we'll look in the log files folder in the directory where you installed the teaching pack. We named our subject test when we ran the experiment, so we'll look for files that start with the name test Simon effect. Each time you complete an experiment, Three tab delimited text files are saved, each with different information. The log file is a standard presentation log file. It includes information about the timing of every stimulus and response in the experiment, some of which may not be particularly important for you, like the timing of fixation points or intertrial intervals. Next is the file test Simon effect text. The text file is sort of like a condensed log file with only the information you are most likely to need. The text file contains information like trial number, condition, response, accuracy and reaction time for each trial. In the documentation for each experiment, the column headings for this text file are described. In the Simon Effect output, we have three important columns related to the condition for each trial. Box side tells us whether the stimulus appeared on the left side or right side of the screen. Box color tells us the color of the stimulus, here blue or red. Finally, the Simon condition column tells us whether the box side was congruent with correct response button side. When the box and response button are on opposite sides, the trial is incongruent. Remember that the Simon effect is found when incongruent responses take longer than congruent ones. If we wanted to test for the Simon effect, we could copy this data into a spreadsheet or statistical analysis program and run a t-test comparing reaction times for congruent and incongruent conditions. The last file is labelled Summary. Often you might want to quickly see how one participant performed numerically without having to copy data or run statistical tests. The summary output is designed for exactly this kind of quick check. The summary file computes simple condition averages. In most cases it reports simple accuracy and reaction time measures for the most relevant conditions. In the Simon effect summary data we can see accuracy and reaction times for congruent and incongruent conditions. Here we can see that the average reaction time in congruent trials was 650 milliseconds. In contrast, the average reaction time for incongruent trials was 949 milliseconds. At least numerically, this participant showed the expected pattern of results. 
To review, each teaching experiment produces three data files. In order of decreasing complexity, they are the presentation log file, which includes all logged information, including timing of all responses and events. The standard output text file, which includes trial-by-trial -trial information and excludes most irrelevant data. We expect that most people will use this file for data analysis. The summary output file, which includes grand averages for relevant conditions.